So thank you so much for doing this interview with me. It really means a lot considering no you're a WNBA star. <laughs> um, no so, um, can you give a little bit of background on like who you are for those who don't know? Uh, so my name is Morgan Tuck. Um, I play for the Connecticut Sun in the WNBA. Um, for college, I played at UConn, um, and I'm from Chicago, Illinois. That's great. Okay. Um, so in this interview, we're going to talk about mostly your high school and your college experience, and more so in high school, your recruiting process and just navigating the sport and all that it takes to become pro. Okay. Um, so our, our first question is, um, what is the most challenging part of the recruiting process for you, and what would you do differently if you had a chance to go back? Um, I think the hardest part was, like, I mean, at first it's, like, super exciting because you have all these schools that are, like, interested in you and everything, but then I think after a while it gets a little bit overwhelming. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, so for me, the one thing I would have changed was just kind of, like, take my time and, like, really look into each school a little bit more. Um, because I think when I, like, looked at the big picture and it's like, okay, all these schools, I just was like, okay, I don't know what to do because it's too many. So I think if you just take your time and, like, look at each school, like, really weed out the schools you don't want to, you know, that you're not really considering, I think that would have made my process a lot easier. That's great. Yeah, it's really hard. Like, for LRT Sports, we try to help um, high school athletes as much as we can by giving them feedback from actual college athletes on their coaches just to give them a little bit more insight as to what it would be like playing for this co for this coach right um so back when you were still in high school what was like the most significant factor in you playing for UConn besides them having like the best um yeah. women's basketball <laughs> program um the biggest thing is when I went to go visit um and I mean obviously the reason I went to visit because UConn was yeah they were the best but once mm -hmm. I went there I think the coaches and the players were like super honest because I think sometimes if you go to some schools, they're really trying to sell you on the school and like right. convince you to go there by telling you how amazing everything is. And, you know, they focus on everything that's just positive. But I think when I went there, they were the only school that I went to where it was like, you know, we're going to have two more recruits here next week. So like they're very open with like they didn't just try to make you feel like their world is revolving around you because mm -hmm. they're not like they're recruiting a bunch of other people just how they're recruiting you. So I think that was something that I knew was like, okay, they're real. They're really, they're not trying to sell me on the school. They're just really showing me what they have to offer. And I think that was something that, that really stuck out to me because like no other school did that at all. It's great. Yeah. It's honesty is on, it's like key to yeah, being big... right. Um, how would a high school student be able to follow in your footsteps? Like how would, how would you recommend someone to get on a coach's radar? Um, I think the biggest thing is getting exposure. Um, so, I mean, luckily, like, my high school team, we kind of stay together in the summertime for, like, those AAU tournaments and everything right. and, like, the exposure tournaments. Um, but, you know, I know a lot of people that went and played for different teams that went to, you know, if it's, like, EYBL or, you know, Nike Nationals, like, different types of tournaments that coaches will be there. And I feel like that's probably the easiest way. And then um, besides that is if you're not able to get on a team like that, like, don't be afraid to, like, send – your, you know, film or clips, highlights to coaches and reach out to coaches because sometimes, you know, they just might not have seen you or they might not have been in the gym that you play in. So, like, don't be afraid to really reach out and kind of put yourself out there. That's great. Um, so kind of on those lines, um, what advice can you give to young athletes as far as social media is concerned? Like, what are some do's and don'ts? Would you recommend posting their their tape of, them, of their highlight reel? Yeah, I think... That just anything that can basically like show what you can do and put you out there more, I think is awesome. Um, and I think that's like a perfect tool to use. Like social media can be used as a good tool. Like it can show people that maybe they're not going to travel, but if they see your film, then that gets them interested and then they look into you. Um, but, you know, I think social media can be great, but it can also be terrible because, you know, coaches look at that. Like there's thousands and thousands of kids that are trying to play. So if you are posting something that maybe you shouldn't have, and you think it's, like, gone away, but then it comes up, and, you know, that can just be another reason or just something that they're looking for to be like, okay, we're not going to recruit this person anymore because, you know, we don't know about their character or how they are as a person. So I think just to be careful with social media, really make sure what you're posting is something that, you know, you wouldn't be ashamed of if it came back, you know, if someone, a coach saw it, you want everything to be 
positive, super, super positive, because they definitely pay attention to things like that. Right, yeah, especially with, like, athletes nowadays, it's really hard to navigate that. And, like, what you keep public and private. Um, Before you mentioned, like, you stuck with your high school team and played AAU tournaments. Um, We know that this can happen more often than not, but, like, if you're not getting along with a teammate or a coach, um, what would you recommend for a girl? Like, how would they go about that? Um, Well, I think the first thing you should do is, you know, talk to the person that you have an issue with. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I know from player to coach, it can be a little bit tricky. Right. Um, but especially when it's player to player, you should just, instead of letting it fester and, you know, making it a bigger deal, like really talk to that person, say what your issues are. And if you can't resolve it, then sometimes you just kind of have to deal with it because that's just like in life, you're going to work with people that you might not get along with. Right. Um, so even doing it at a young age on a team, it's just, you know, you're going to have to get used. You're not ever going to like every person that you're playing with or working with. Um, and then as for if you don't like your coach, I mean, that's sometimes hard. Um, but I think you can do the same thing. Like, even if you don't feel comfortable going up to your coach, you know, talk to an assistant coach to go with you or have, you know, like a, another teammate, you know, into, you know, just voice how you feel. Um, but then it's kind of the same, you know, you might work for someone that you don't agree with. You don't like how they do things, but, you know, sometimes you really just have to work through it. And, and that can be the same, you know. If you don't, you might not get along with your coach in high school, but you could go to college and it could be the same thing. So I think it's just something that it's just a life skill that you learn how to manage and how to deal with. Right. That's great. Yeah. Because playing in high school can be totally different from college, too. So um, along those lines, when you transitioned from high school to college and college to professional, what were the biggest challenges on and off the court? Uh, On the court, the biggest challenge is just like the level that it's played at. You know, you're not really doing, like, a drill that you've never done before or, you know, it's it's very similar. It's, like, the level and the intensity and, like, how hard you have to play. It's, like, you don't realize that you're not playing hard until you get there. And you're, like, I think I am playing hard, but then your coach is telling you you're not. And you're, like, yeah. but I am. And they're, like, no, you're not. And so it's, like, it's that intensity level that it just takes time to get used to. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, on the court, obviously, like, there's going to be people that are bigger, faster, and stronger. You know, you might be, like, the best player in your high school team. Then you go to college, most likely you're not going to be the best player on, the, on your college team. And then the mm-hmm. same when you go to the professional level. So you're kind of always starting over. Um, and then off the court, you know, it's just, I think when you go from high school to college, you have a little bit more free time in the sense you're not sitting in class all day and like in school all day. Um, like you'll, but you have, so you have options where it's like preseason, you'll have your, you know, you might have like a, a 6 a.m. workout and then an 8 a.m. class and then study hall and then, your another workout with strength and uh, conditioning later on in the day and then a meeting later so it's kind of like spread out through the day right um so it takes a little bit more accountability and then you know with classes in college I mean some schools have like class checks but like we didn't have it so if if you decided you didn't feel like going to class it was like no one knew you weren't going to class (laughs) you know so it takes when you go to college it's really more on yourself to make sure that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing and your priorities are right. And I think that sometimes can be the hardest part when you're going from high school to college because you just have a lot more freedom than you've ever had in your life. Right, yeah, along those lines, actually, do you have any tips for athletes as far as time management is concerned? Um, I'd say the biggest tip is to use your resources. You know, Mm -hmm. at most schools, like, you have an academic advisor um, and you have, especially in freshman year, like, mandatory study hall and things like that. And, you know, with your teachers, office hours, like really use all your resources because I think that's a way it kind of keeps you on a little bit more of a schedule. Um, and you know, they, you have someone that's checking up on you to making sure that you're doing the right things. Right. Um, because sometimes it does get hard, you know, when you don't have someone making sure you're doing the right things and making sure that you know what you're supposed to do. And sometimes it's, it's, it's really easy to not do those things. So I think if you can use your resources, that helps you, you know, stay on the right track. All right. That's great. Um, what advice can you give to upcoming athletes as far as training is concerned in the off season? Like, how would you rise above all the other players? Uh, first thing is just, you know, just putting in as much work as you can. Mm-hmm. You know, not when you're overdoing it where your, like, body's breaking down because you're just working so hard. But, you know, to me, the way you get better is you just put time. Like, for me, it's just getting in the gym, you know, working out, especially when you're younger. I think it's less of a focus on, like, weightlifting and more on your skill set and, like, really – 
honing in on those skills because you're going to get the weightlifting, you're going to get the conditioning, especially when you move to the next level. Like, that's a really big piece. Um, So just trying to make sure that you're as skilled as possible. Um, If you need to, like, watch whatever sport you're playing, like, watch it and watch the next level and see how people play. Um, I think the offseason is a great time to, you know, you can get better physically, but then also try to improve your IQ and to really understand the game that you're playing and uh, understand it at a higher level. That's great. Yeah. Um, sim- kind of similar along those lines. Um, what do you feel is the most important quality for an athlete to carry themselves as? Um, I would just say as a positive person. Mm-hmm. You know, I think as you get as you get older, you're gonna be everyone's gonna be really good. You know, there might be there's the hand the handful that are like exceptional at the very top, but everyone's good when you get to the next level. Um, so I think the biggest thing with all the teams I've been on and all the people I've been around, you remember the people that have the best personality, that are positive, that are fun to be around, that you enjoy spending time with, you know, because those are that creates those memories and that creates, you know, those lasting friendships. It's not your skill level or how well you play or how many championships you won. It's really about you as a person and if people can say that you have good character and that you're a good person. That's great. Yeah, ca- uh, character is really key in this situation, considering that's all you can really, like, hold yourself to. Yeah. Um, you were able to uh, um, amass four NCAA um, titles when you were with UConn, um, but you must have had some bad days along the way, well, as all athletes do. Um, what, can, what tip can you give to athletes uh, to stay motivated um, when things aren't going your way? I think the biggest thing is just thinking about what did you go there for? Like, what was your reasoning for even wanting to play at the next level? And why did you pick that school? And, you know, what what are your goals? Because there's so many times in college where I'm, like, crying on the phone with my mom. Like, I wanted to go home. And, right. you know, even though, like, you're winning games, but it's hard. Like, it's, it's different. You're away from home. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think the biggest thing is just you have to remember the big picture. Like, if you might be in one, you might have a bad day and, you know, you feel like your world is ending and everything's going bad, but you have to remember, like, why did I go here? Like, what's my purpose of being here? And you have to think about, too, especially in college, if you're able to get a scholarship or partial scholarship, like, you're there to get your education, and it's paid for. Like, that's setting you up so much better in life. And so it's really, like, you kind of have to, you know, what my mom always said, it was, like, you can have your pity party for, like, a short amount of time, and then you're back, you know, thinking about your goals and your big picture. And I think that's something that's always helped me. That's great. Yeah, being positive and all that is really key, yeah. too. Um, if you could go back, what would you do in college that you wish you spent more time doing? Um, I would say, especially my freshman year, really, I think, taking school a little more serious. Like, I mean, I've never done bad in school, but I think, mm-hmm. you know, when my freshman year, I was like, well, if I don't have to go to class, I, I don't want to get up <laughs> for that 8 a.m. class. Yeah. You know? And it's so easy to do that. Um, so I think that would be the first thing is because, you know, it's hard, it's harder when you like start worse, you know, if your if your GPA drops some in your, you know, from your freshman year, you have to like really work your way back up. Right. Um, and I see that happen a lot. Like that's something that happened with me and I had to like really work it, you know, by the time you're like a junior, you're like, okay, I got it figured out. I was just messing around as a freshman and then you, you know, you get it there, but I wish I could have just started out and really just understood I need to prioritize right yeah. away. Um, and I think that would have made life a little bit easier. <laughs> yeah, like definitely having that discipline to knowing like what your goals are, like you said, is yep. definitely really important. Um, kind of on a different track. Um, when you're a freshman, obviously food on campus is known to be unhealthy. Um, what advice would you give to a college athlete who's trying to um, eat healthily as far like as much as they can? Um, I would say, you know, when you go to, like, a dining hall or something like that, like, usually there might be either, like, salad bar or you can, like, we had, uh, well, we had, like, four different dining halls, but the one we always went to, they kind of had, like, a grill bar where you can, like, have them make things for you so you can get, like, grilled chicken or, you know, stuff like freshly made. Mm-hmm. So I would say definitely try to gravitate more toward those things right. um, because that, you know, it's included in your pay. You don't have to go, like, to the store and buy it and it's cooked for you. It's not, like, you know, fried chicken or something. So I would yeah. say really try to, like, scout out the dining halls, see what options they have because most places will have, like, one a little bit healthier dining hall. Mm-hmm. So I would say definitely try to, you know, go around and just see what's available and then 
you know, if it's really important, you kind of sometimes have to just make that extra effort to make sure that you're eating healthy. But sometimes it's hard, um, but you should definitely be able to find some things to make it a little bit healthier. Right. And um, another problem that freshmen tend to have is, like, proving themselves to their new teammates and coaches. Um, What advice can you give to an athlete who's looking to get off the bench? Um, I'd say the biggest, uh, well, I'll say the first thing is sometimes you have to wait your turn. Right. Like, that's sometimes how it is um, when you go somewhere and there's juniors and seniors that, you know, are really good, and they've waited their time, and now it's their time to be a starter and play a lot of it. So sometimes that's the situation. You have to wait your time, which is hard. It's hard to do, but sometimes that's what you just have to do. Mm-hmm. And then I think the next thing is just work as hard as you can. You know, make sure that you're doing everything in your control as well as you can. Um, and then, you know, don't worry about the things that you can't control. You can't control your playing time, but you know if you're working hard, you're taking care of school, you're not getting in trouble, you know, your time will come. So I think that's the biggest thing is, you know, you can't really worry about what you can't control. Um, but just focus on the things you can, and then if you're doing everything possible, your time will definitely come. Yeah, that's great. Like, your advice has been, like, somewhat like a coaching style, for <laughs> it sounds. Um, what is the best piece of advice that a college coach or any coach along the way has given you? Um, I'd say I think the best advice – was just to be confident in yourself um, and to work really hard. And I think with those two things, you know, if, you, if you're putting in, I think, and, and they go hand in hand. If you're in the gym and you're working and you're making sure you're taking care of everything you need to take care of, you're going to be more confident because you've prepared for it. Um, so, I, And that's honestly in life in general, where if you prepare for something and you know that you've done it, you're going to be confident. You're going to feel good when you go out there, you know. But if you're, if you know you shortcut it and you didn't, you know, do the right things and you're worried about it, then when you get out there and you're performing, it's not going to go as well. So I say the biggest thing is just work as hard as you can and then just be confident in yourself. Right, like knowing your worth and like sticking yeah. to it is really important too. Yeah. Um, had you not gone pro, what do you think you would be doing? Um, if I didn't go pro, honestly, I think I'd be coaching. Mm, I think that's what I yeah. Um, and then, and I got into this because I got hurt while I was pro, but I got to do some broadcasting. So I think it'd be like coaching then into broadcasting. That's really interesting. Um, did you have like an interest in that in college as well? Um, I think I had an interest in coaching a little bit in college. I didn't think anything about broadcasting, honestly, until later on. Uh-huh. Um, but, you know, at this point, I think broadcasting is a better route for me than coaching, but we'll see. We'll see. That's <laughs> really funny. Um, what is the funniest thing that has happened to you or a teammate on the court? The funniest thing, well, it, okay, well, this actually happened very recently where uh-huh. I was, like, wide open for a layup and totally just missed it. And, like, my teammates were all up and excited and happy, and it, it was just bad. But, I mean, I just, we just laughed about it, and it was, it was funny. Um, but, yeah, stuff like that. And that really just happened recently. So, yeah, <laughs> stuff like that happens all the time. All right. Um, that's all the questions I have for you. Um, would you like to speak on anything else or give any other piece of advice from, like, you yourself personally? Um, yeah, I would say, I mean, it kind of goes with what I was saying mm-hmm. already, but I would say the biggest piece of advice, like, for kids that are coming up is, and it's hard not to do this, but when you're not to compare yourself to other people, because mm-hmm. everyone's situation is different, everyone has different things going on. Um, and sometimes I think it's hard when you're like, you see someone that's doing what you want to do and achieving the things you want to achieve to kind of start doubting yourself and feel less because you see someone else doing it. Um, but don't, don't do that. It doesn't help at all. It doesn't make anything better. So really just be confident in yourself, work as hard as you can, be happy for other people that are doing well, but know that if you do what you, what you're supposed to do and work really hard, that you can be there too. And to not, you know, don't feel like you're less than because someone is, achieving things that you might want to achieve right like staying in your own lane having your own personal goals and not comparing to others that's yep exactly because really if you great. do that it's just you're going to be doing it forever and it, it never goes away yeah. So. <laughs> yeah well thank you so much on behalf of lrt sports and like helping future athletes hopefully going pro going to yeah. high school going to college like it really makes a difference to these young athletes but yeah, if you have anything else going on, just let me know because I like right. what you guys are doing. So yeah, I definitely will. Thank you so much.